Chris Burns, and welcome to The Network, hard talk with a matrix of newsmakers. The headlines. Brexit the day after. What would the British and EU citizens wake up to if the UK voted to exit the European Union? How would that impact trade, prices, politics, jobs, and daily life on both sides of the channel? Would London remain Europe's financial centre? It's done fine outside the Euro, but will the EU remain Britain's biggest customer for trade? Who wins, who loses with a Brexit? Will an EU without the Union Jack be less likely to reform its single market and stir more competition? Will EU federalists say good riddance, freer to drive deeper integration? And what about the UK's and EU's standing in the world? Will they matter less separately in global crises? Will it be easier for other powers to divide and conquer Europe? Now, wired into this edition of the network here in the European Parliament in Brussels, David Campbell Bannerman, a British Conservative MEP, former UKIP chairman, author of Time to Jump, exploring a Britain outside the EU. Adrian Tripp, CEO of the European Business Awards, which picks some of the hottest companies throughout Europe. And Jo Leinen, or Jo, jo Leinen, German Socialist MEP, member of the pro-federalist Spinelli Group of politicians, NGOs, and experts. Question to all of you, starting with David. It is Brexit the day after. Imagine that. The British just lost their right to work in the EU. The Europeans, the EU, EU citizens just lost their right to work in Britain. Are you worried? Well, I, I don't accept the premise, I'm sorry. I, uh, the deal involved in Brexit would mean that Britain would actually have full right to work and EU citizens full right to work within the UK. That's what Norway and Switzerland get. Uh, I can't foresee that scenario arising, to be honest. But basically, it will be life as usual after Brexit. That's the important thing. Uh, we'd have a trade deal, but we wouldn't have political union. Well, it sounds like uh, having your cake and eating it too. Or, or what do you think, Adrian? Uh, I would say that quite the reverse of that. We've just surveyed business leaders across Europe and 86% of them believe that the, EU, uh, the UK exiting the EU would be dangerous for business and trade and for jobs. And Joe, what do you think? It's the most stupid uh, decision of the 21st century in order to unite. We are now separating from each other. I think it's bad news for millions of people in Britain and the continent, a dark day for Europe. Okay, well, uh, let's, let's speak more specifically about Norway. No input on EU policies, if you were like Norway. But you have to play by the rules that are set by the EU. You have no representation in that. Is that okay with you, David? Well, uh, this is a myth. Uh, the Norwegian uh, Parliament actually is only 10% of their laws every year is single market laws, which, yes, they, they get direct from the EU. But they have control of fishing, farming, trade, justice and home affairs, energy and the environment. Britain doesn't. The EU has that. Hey. So we get those powers straight back. Adrian, you see it that way? I think Norway's an exception. It's an oil-rich country. Trade with Europe is not as relevant as the UK's trade. Well, so is the UK the at the moment. They've got a lot of oil, no? No, not to the With same Scotland? extent of its GDP as, as Norway has. OK. You, Joe, what do you think? Oh, it's an illusion that uh, in Westminster uh, one could do uh, different politics than on the continent. Uh, most of the time they would follow EU legislation without having influence should leave the on the market. decision making in the EU. We can leave the single come. market. Uh, that's what I propose. We leave the single market. Only 8% of the British economy is trade with the EU. 8%. Okay, but it, well, supposedly it's your biggest customer. How, I, wouldn't that mean less economies of scale and higher prices? No, the rest of the world is a, a Britain's biggest customer now. The, the share is only 40% of our exports go to the EU, 60% to the rest of the world. That's still pretty big. We've got to be global, more global, less regional. I'm not saying we don't want trade. We all want trade. But we're the largest single customer of the EU, Britain is. So we'll get a good trade deal. David, uh, sorry, Adrian, with one foot on each side there. I think the business leaders think that if this happens, then the UK will still have to pay because there's no way the rest of the EU would not make them pay for being part of a single market. Joe, how do you think this would impact prices in the EU if the UK, if the UK left? It's a disadvantage, uh, of course, for a bigger market that we need. Look on China, look on uh, India, look on the US. They all have big markets and we are now reducing our market, uh, so to reduce our competitiveness and uh, our comparable advantages that we could have in Europe. 
Can I just say, I, I, I'm responsible for the uh, trade deal with India. I was born in India. Uh, it, but it's going nowhere after seven, eight years. TTIP is in trouble. We nearly lost Canadian free trade agreement. So it's exaggerated. All these trade benefits are greatly exaggerated. No, but, the, but if, if there is a TTIP, for instance, uh, Britain would be out. You'd have to start to renegotiate again. You might not uh, we, be able to get a negotiate deal with America. as strong as you could. What I hear from American congressmen is that we'd get a deal pretty quickly. with the. It's, you know, we are the largest investor. The UK is the largest investor in the US. U.S. large investor in the U.K. Okay, Adrian, what about the, the fact that if there is no U.K. in the EU, there would be less of a driving force, wouldn't there, of, uh, for reform, free market, uh, single market reform? How do you see it? I would say so. Again, from the business leaders that we've spoken to, all of them believe that being involved in the EU is right. That's not to say that they don't think that there should be reforms, but the most likely, the reforms are most likely to happen if the UK is still in. But from a, a federalist viewpoint, would you think good riddance in that sense, that the UK is out? We can do what we want now. A big blockade would be removed and uh, we could uh, move forward much quicker exactly. and integrate much quicker. Yep. So that would be for the beneficial uh, side of uh, you, you want uh, one the country EU Europe. and uh, we would, let's say, have uh, somebody away that is blocking all the time since okay. many years. Well, so good well, riddance, David. Well, well, can I just say the Spinelli Group is named after a communist. We're, we're standing here in the Spinelli building. Um, do you want effectively another Soviet <laughs> Union? Is that what your aim is? We are still a European Union where we are freely uniting. Nobody is forced what, to do something. Union? Even the country could go out, as we have seen uh, with Brexit. Okay, what about, what about the fact that, that, that there are parts of Britain that would want to stay in the EU? We could see a balkanization which encourages, encourages other balkanization in Europe. How, wouldn't this open up a Pandora's box, David? Well, no, I, I don't think we would. I mean, yes, around the UK there are different viewpoints. I mean, Scotland has mentioned, but the truth Northern is... Northern Ireland of late. Uh, Northern Ireland is 50-50. I was there two, two weeks ago in Northern Ireland. It's about 50-50. A lot of the unionists would want to vote out, and they're very strong Eurosceptic. Um, um, there, there are a lot in Scotland that are Eurosceptic. But let's give people a choice, a two-year debate over Brexit. Let's look at the pluses and minuses. And I believe there's a strong case for doing our own thing, governing ourselves again. Adrian? I think the, the UK has benefited usually from a trade perspective over the last few years as been part of the EU. If it goes out and it takes two years to debate that, it will economically affect everyone in the UK and probably the rest of Europe too. Okay, quickly. The, uh, the Britain is losing influence. We are in an area of globalization where uh, continents are uniting and we are disuniting. That is ahistorical and uh, Britain yeah. would be out. Which brings me to the last question, not much time, but David, don't you th believe that the EU and Britain would be more easily divided and conquered when they're separate? Uh, in, in, in confrontation with other world powers or economic no, powers? No, I don't. I'm very strongly in favour of NATO, but it's being undermined by, you know, we had the President of the Commission, Mr Juncker, calling for an EU single army. That undermines NATO, okay. weakens us. From a defence standpoint, but what if from an <laughs> economic standpoint? Open skies treaty. Can you, can you negotiate something like that if you're not together, Adrian? I think you can. I think the cost would be huge. OK, Joe? Uh, it is a historic to disunite on this little continent uh, where others are uniting and uh, Britain would lose a lot of influence uh, economically as politically. We're losing it now. We're losing it now. Well, there is talk, David, there is talk mm. that Britain outside the EU may be required to lose its seat in the European in the UN Security Council. It's the other way around. About that? It's the other way around. The EU wants that seat on the Security Council off us. It has its own foreign service. Our embassy is being closed around the world. It's quite the opposite. Let's get back influence. Let's rejoin the WTO. Let's take back 120 seats on the UN from Re the EU. Renationalization so is uh, of the last century. It's nothing for the 21st century. It's just a uh, against the wave of history. It's called democracy. Oh. That, Guys, that one last. last question. We're running out of time. <laughs> a Brexit would mean Nigel Farage and his anti-EU UKIP would lose their seats in the European Parliament. So would I. <laughs> Will you miss them, Adrian? <laughs> no. <laughs> Yo. Yes, because they are a challenge uh, where we get stronger to unite Europe. Uh, they show us how important it is to do more for Europe. David, last word. Um, well, it, it would be you used part to be of with it. UK. I, I was with UKIP. Yeah. I, I'm prepared to lose my seat. There are honest politicians prepared to lose his seat over principle. 
How about that? <laughs> Thanks, David. That's all the time we got for now. I'd like to thank our guests, David Campbell Bannerman, Adrian Tripp, and Yo Leiden. I'm Chris Burns. And until next time, thanks for connecting with the network.